It's the Grande Partenza. Tomorrow, here in the city of Bologna, the 2019 Giro d'Italia will kick off with an eight kilometer individual time trial, which I'm about to ride. Bologna is around two hours southeast of Milan. It's the seventh most populous city of Italy, home to just under 400,000 residents. Soon though, it will see the cycling circus come to town. The 102nd edition of the race is a little over three and a half thousand kilometers long, but it starts with a stage of just eight. This individual time trial is just a little too long to be classed as a prologue, so this will be stage one. Exactly eight kilometers in length, this would normally be a 10 minute effort, if it was flat. And it is for the first 6Ks before we get to a serious sting in the tail, the climb up to San Luca. More on that later. The start ramp itself is going to be located very close to the Fountain of Neptune, which you can see behind me, which was completed in 1563. And in fact, if you look at the trident there at the top, that was the inspiration to the Maserati brothers when they were designing their logo for their new make of car many years ago. The first part of the time trial is all on pretty good city roads that are completely straight and in fact the first turn comes here. That's the Porto San Felice which used to be the westernmost gate in the medieval walls of Bologna before they were all torn down. Built in the 13th century, restored in the 16th and then restored again before Napoleon visited in 1805, 35 years before the walls were all torn down. That final sting in the tail is made even worse by the fact that there's a U-turn going into it. This is the start of the climb to San Luca, the Colla della Gardia. Cycling aficionados will know this climb well because it's used every autumn as the finished climb of the Giro della Miglia, which has been won by the likes of Quintana, Chavez, Ulrich, Fondries, Bugno and Rominger. This is a seriously tough test, which makes pacing more important than ever. Go out too hard in these opening six flat kilometres and you're going to die a thousand deaths up here. This final climb averages 9.7% over 2.1 kilometers with pitches of up to 16%. This first bit is just such a shock to the system after completely flat roads, straight into double digit gradients. But I can just see a little bit of respite coming up. Well, that is the steepest bit. Uh, these two turns mark roughly halfway up this climb. Roadbook says 16%, but I think if you take the inner part, which I just did, I'd say it's well over 25%. It's like riding up a cliff. And that doesn't do much human morale either. Although you're breaking the halfway point, it's a straight wall from here too. Right. This is absolutely horrific. I'm dying a thousand deaths myself. I'm sure this is more than 12%. That is a brute. I knew it was going to be hard, but that was harder than I expected. Uh, 2.1 Ks, 9.7% average gradient. 
and 16% max supposedly, but that was definitely more in that middle section. Uh, the finish, I believe, is actually a couple of hundred metres behind you, just past this Basilica church. Uh, this is Santuario della Madonna di San Luca, which was constructed between 1723 and 1757. And if we decided to walk up here today, which probably would have been a lot nicer and easier, we'd actually have gone through the longest covered arcade in the world, four kilometres long, going through 666 arches. Sounds like one for another time. From the 18th century straight back to the 21st and possibly a glimpse into the future. Uh, behind me you can see five World Tour pros on Zwift and some of them have just completed that eight kilometre time trial course virtually, others are still finishing and this is a new partnership between Zwift and RCS Sport so you two at home will be able to ride this exact course up the climb of San Luca this Saturday, Sunday and Monday and then after that the very specific event. Now this is the start of a big partnership between RCS and Zwift and there are rumours that in the future the first stage of a Grand Tour or a race could be entirely on Zwift. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that prospect in the comment section down below. Uh, Tosh van der Sander I think is the current leader, at least he was when I started filming, but Eduardo Athene over here from Itchton Scott I think has just crossed the finish line. Now he was pushing out over 450 watts for the most part and it was a good six or seven minutes before he opened his mouth. That lad is pretty talented, I would say. Right, well I hope you've enjoyed our preview video of the opening time trial course. Let us know who you think is going to win stage one in the comments section down below. I'm really going to go out on a limb and say Primoz Roglic. Uh, I think he is the clear favourite for me. Uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday. Right, if you enjoyed this preview, preview, should I say, please give us a thumbs up just down below this video. And if you would like to see our big GCN preview of the Giro d'Italia, you can find that just over there.